Bible or if you've got a device and you, um, you want to read along, uh, if you want to go to Daniel chapter number 2 and uh, verse number 19 is where we're going to start. So Daniel 2 and verse number 19. The word of the Lord says, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Now, just make sure you get this. A night vision happens at night. I, I know some of you may have needed a little help there with that. So, Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. I, I, notice, notice what that says there. Actually, notice what it does not say. It does not say, for he has wisdom and he has might, which is what which would be the case for you and I. We we have wisdom. We may have some power and strength in a physical aspect. Uh, others in other ways, maybe on a job, you've got some, some might, if you will. You can throw your weight around, so to speak. But, but Daniel said wisdom and might are his. Not that he has them, they belong to him. They, they, he, he, he owns them. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that knoweth understanding. Verse number 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. He knoweth what is in the darkness. This title will make a little more sense as we go along here this morning. But I want to I want to talk to you, preach to you this morning on the treasures in the darkness. Treasures in the darkness. God, I thank you once again that in the midst of these unusual times and circumstances that we continue to be in, that you remain the same. I'm thankful again, God, and I'm thankful these last couple of weeks more than ever that you are an omnipresent God. That you are not limited to a location, a facility, a building. I thank you that you fill all space. I thank you that you manifest yourself anywhere. I thank you for that today, God. I thank you for your presence that's already been manifested in our worship. I thank you for your spirit that's already been ministering. And I'm asking God that again today you would speak to us. That you would speak through your word and minister to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. I pray again today, God, that you would use me not to, not to preach a sermon this morning, but to deliver a message from you. I trust you for your anointing today, God. I depend on you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's, it's not the focus, but I do want to just take a moment. And, and draw your attention back to verse 21. He changeth the times and the seasons. Now watch this next part. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and setteth up kings. That means, that is telling us, and there are plenty of other places throughout Scripture that either say or demonstrate that God is completely in control. I, I referenced this a couple of weeks ago, and I'll just I'll reference it 
again, to those of you that may fall into the category of, of a conspiracy theorist or you, you buy into the conspiracies, the bottom line is, according to this verse right here, God is in control. Right. Honestly, what difference does it make if what we're dealing with right now came from a lab somewhere? Right. Who cares? God is the one that changes the times and the seasons. God is the one who is in control. That's why and I've had a couple of people through the years try to share with me some things that, uh, at least in my opinion, fit in the category of a conspiracy theory. And I, I've never really had much interest. You say, well, you don't care, Brother Wright? You, are you naive? Uh, I, I don't... I call it what you want to call it, but I guess my point is, what's the point? God is ultimately in control. In fact, look at the, the next part of that verse. God, not, not you and I, not, a, not even the voting process. God sets up kings and sets down kings. God places kings and removes kings. God places presidents and removes presidents. God determines, God decides. We, we, we think, man may think he's in control, but ultimately it's fitting into God's plan and purpose. You, you may not like the current president, but according to this verse, God put him in place. You may not have liked previous presidents, but according to this verse, God put them in place because there was a purpose. There was something he was trying to accomplish. So again, it's not the focus this morning, but I, I did want to remind you, and it's kind of hard to pass it up in reading that verse, to remind you that God is in control. If in fact, and again for the record, I, I don't really believe this, but if in fact somehow these last couple of weeks and, and even right now what we are facing is some kind of an attack on our religious liberty, our religious freedom, God is the one that has to decide to allow that. God is also the one that can decide to stop it. He changes the times and the seasons. He changes the times and the seasons. I know it's, it, there are things that, uh, if you will, man is involved in the process, the change, the, 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 the solution. But ultimately, it comes from God. Ultimately, the wisdom, the knowledge, the, the understanding comes from God because God is in control. So again, that's not the focus this morning, so let's get more to the focus. Verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. He knows what is in the darkness. I, 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 I hope, I pray that for all of us by the end of this day with this morning and tonight, the Lord willing, that you and I are going to have a little different perspective on darkness after today. I, I know that most of the time, darkness, especially in a spiritual perspective, from a, from a spiritual perspective, that darkness is considered a negative thing. I, I know that in John chapter 1, the scripture tells us that the light shined into the darkness, and the darkness, the King James says, comprehended it not, and for you and I today, the word comprehend is, is first and foremost kind of about understanding, and, and, and that word there is not about understanding, it's more so, that word means that, that the darkness cannot overpower the light, and so the light of Jesus Christ, and we believe in the light of the gospel that shines into the darkness, and and, and darkness, and, and from a poetic standpoint, from a poetic perspective, darkness is usually considered to be a, a negative thing. Darkness is associated with misery. Darkness is associated with depression. Darkness can be associated with discouragement. But, but I have discovered this, this week a, a different perspective of darkness. Obviously, 
all of that is, is still the case. And we know that, that there's darkness, there's spiritual darkness, and that spiritual darkness can dominate our world. But, but there is another component to darkness. I guess maybe it's more so about our lives individually or purpose personally, but if nothing else, there's another side to it. He knows, he knows, God knows what is in the darkness. And I want you to notice that that statement is made in the context of the first part of that verse that says he reveals the deep and secret things. So it says he reveals the deep and secret things, and then it goes on to say he knows what is in the darkness. So really the implication is that in the darkness there is deep and secret things because with him dwelleth light. Job chapter 12, verse 22. He discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. He discovereth deep things out of darkness. God's Word translation says that verse this way. He uncovers mysteries hidden in the darkness and brings gloom into the light. He uncovers mysteries that are hidden in the darkness. He revealeth deep and secret things he knows what is in the darkness. What is, what is one of the reasons why we don't like the darkness? Because of the unknown. Even, even in our, you know, if I'm outside and it's dark, I, uh, I especially don't like the darkness. Last, uh, uh, this past, earlier this week, I think it was, I was out in, the, in my yard and doing some work and I was, I was, uh, we, we got a lot of ivy, and, um, and as some of you know and have experienced, ivy can take off and it can grow up into trees and uh, it, it eventually can, can kill the trees. And so you got to, uh, or you should at least, I guess, kind of keep it trimmed. And, and we've got to, in, in not in kind of the main area of our yard, but kind of in the back part of our yard and, and, and um, more so towards kind of the, the, uh, the property line where we don't really use that much. There's some trees that are just, they are covered in ivy. And so I was, I was going around and, and some of it's, you know, it's new growth enough that you can, you can pull it right off and snip it at the bottom and you're, you're good. But others of it, because it's been going so long, you, you basically can just cut a chunk out and make sure that vine no longer has life and and some of it's so wrapped up in the tree and the tree bark that if you go to yank it off, it, it can pull all kinds of bark off the tree. And so I've, it's my understanding that in that situation, you, you're better off just, you, you, you cut it so that it dies, but then you just let it sort of go through the process of decaying on the tree. So anyway, I, w I was in the process of doing that and I'd been, been done, I'd done several trees and I was in the middle of doing a tree that was one of the thicker ones not only did it have some really thick vines that had already been uh, growing for probably several years, there was also newer growth. And, and I'm at the bottom and I'm snipping, and as I look up, I see about probably a three, I, at, at the time it felt like about a ten foot long, but I don't think it was, about a three foot long snake skin that was, that was perfectly uh, vertical in the, in the, uh, in the vines. Uh, I don't do snakes. There's a couple other things I don't like, but snakes are probably, as far as what we encounter on a regular basis, snakes are the top of my list. And uh, it, 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 all of the uh, blood drained. Uh, wherever blood goes, it drained. And then, of course, as I went to step back, the moment I stepped back, there just happened to be a stick that I stepped on that bumped my uh, ankle, and needless to say, there was a little bit of a dance that took place as well. 
it, it was the unknown that startled me. Of course, this is not the best analogy because now that I do know what's there, I've tried to stay away from it. But it, it's the unknown. So again, if, you know, if you're outdoors, if you're camping and it's dark and you're going to take a walk, it's the unknown that scares us. But even in, even in places we're comfortable with, in our own homes, at, at night, in the middle of the night, when there's no light, and, and, and it's, it's not that, it, it's the fear of what might be there. But I, I want you to see a different perspective today. In the darkness... God's got some deep and secret things. And of course, as Daniel says, and I'll touch on this tonight, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself here, but Daniel says it this way. David says it another way. Some of you might can figure out what David says the way David says, but Daniel says, the light dwelleth with him. So it's in the darkness but light dwelleth with him. And then again, Job says, He discovereth deep things out of, out of darkness. He uncovers mysteries hidden in the darkness. Barnes Notes says this, that is, with regards to this statement, He discovereth deep things out of the darkness. That is, God discloses truths which are holy beyond the power of man to discover. Truth, truths that seem to be hidden in profound night. This may refer either to the revelation which God was believed to have furnished or to his power of bringing out the most secret thoughts and purposes or to his power of predicting future events by bringing them out of darkness to the clear light of day, or to his power of detecting plots, intrigues, and conspiracies. God uncovers, and there may be some things that God uncovers from the darkness that are the, the, the plots or the negative things, they're, they're the... Uh, they're the evil things. But again, in the context of, of, of these two verses, Daniel and Job, the, the context, to my understanding, the darkness here is not a negative thing. We actually are uh, we're experiencing a little bit right now. It's that time of year where I think we're experiencing something that maybe could be a little bit of an analogy of this. One of the things that's a known we experience in other places it's it's even more extreme than it is here in in maryland and that is that in in especially the middle of winter uh the days are are very short as most of you know there's places in the world that when they get to the to, to in the middle of their winter they, they may only have a couple of hours of daylight every day here it's it's i think around Oh, five o'clock or so, I think, is the earliest that, that we kind of get to. And I don't know, I've noticed the last couple of years, I, I don't ever remember this before, and as much as I love winter, one of the things the last couple of years, I, I've kind of gotten a little bit, uh, I don't know, depressed is probably a little bit too strong, but uh, the, the, the shortness, I, I, I'm, 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 you know, it's six o'clock at night, seven o'clock, sometimes even eight o'clock at night, and it's, you know, it's already kind of pitch black outside, and I'm thinking if this was summertime, we'd, we'd still have a lot, of, a lot of daylight. And so winter is, is long, dark nights. That's one of the things, especially, again, in the kind of the middle of winter. But now, I, I, I believe me, I would much rather be in the sanctuary this morning seeing all of your faces and preaching and interacting that way um, I, I don't know if I can come up with very many things that are pluses about what we're doing and the way we're doing this, at least from my perspective. But one of the things, especially right now, that is a plus is if I look just to my right, there is a, there is a bay window. And uh, just outside of that window are uh, extremely large uh, azalea bushes that are in the process of blooming. 
part of that bush is is uh, got full blooms. The rest of it's got a ways to go, and and uh, it's absolutely beautiful. As some of you have heard the story, but when we first saw this house two years ago, it was it was just past the peak and of of the azaleas in the yard and and the pre the the I guess the builders or somebody I don't know if it was the original owners. Apparently they loved azaleas because there are azaleas all over our yard and few of them are in full bloom and a bunch of them are blooming. But in the context of this, the beauty that I am seeing right now has come out of darkness. It's come out of the darkness of several months of winter. It's come out of those long, dark nights and dark days that now I am seeing the beauty. We, 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 uh, we kind of uh, tend to think of morning and then night. We, we kind of define our days by morning and then night. If I, if I were to ask you, what do you think the start of a day is, uh, you, you more than likely will say morning because that's the way our our perception works. That's the way we think. Uh, morning is the start of a new day. But if you go back to Genesis and the account of creation, there, there is a specific order that is given in that account of creation. And that order is that the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning. So based on that, what, what I take away from that is that night is actually the start of the day, of the new day at least. It's not the morning at whatever time I wake up. Some of you are early risers and, and then others of us are not so much early risers. Um, and, and just because, uh, and this is probably a little defensive statement, but just because you, you don't like to get up early doesn't mean you are lazy. Some of us like to get up later and work later. But others of you uh, are, are early, early risers. And um, uh, why am I saying that? This is the first time I think in a couple of weeks this has happened. And here it's happened. I've just had that complete brain. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. I've got my, my two-person audience here is paying attention and with me. Thank God for that. Uh, but it, it's the nighttime that is the start. Oh, I know. Let me finish the point. Whatever time you awaken in the morning... You consider that the start of your day. But when creation was taking place, evening and the morning, in fact, we kind of, even when it comes to sleeping, we, we typically think, I've had a long day, I'm looking forward to sleep so that I can rest from the day. But in God's way of doing things, the night was not to make up for the previous day. The night was preparation for what was to come. You rested through the night not to recover from yesterday. You rested through the night to get ready for what was coming. I pray that somehow God would give us a different perspective today. I pray that rather than seeing what we are in right now is this darkness and this doom and gloom, what we need to start seeing is God has brought us into some darkness because there are some secrets, there are some mysteries that God is wanting to reveal. And I believe there's some mysteries that God is wanting to reveal in our lives personally. And I think there's also some things God is wanting to reveal through this Amen. darkness for the church in general. Amen. And it's not negative things. It's not bad things. It's some treasures that God has because God knows and reveals the deep and the secret things. Isaiah 45 and verse 3 says this. I, I've heard this verse. I think I probably have quoted this verse. But I've, I've heard it throughout my life. Perhaps you have or will recognize it or at least part of it. Isaiah 45 and 3 says, I will give thee the treasures of of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I the Lord which call thee by thy name by my by thy name am the God of Israel 
Now, I, I think I was thinking about it, especially this morning as I was finishing up my preparation for today. But I, I feel like I've usually heard this verse quoted actually more so this way when it's quoted versus being read. I will give thee the treasures of the kingdom of darkness. But that's not in there. It doesn't say, I will give thee the treasures of the kingdom of darkness. And I, I think one of the things that's caused us to think of this verse that way and in that context is probably what happened with the children of Israel. That when they came out of Egypt, when, when they left Egypt after all those, the first nine plagues and now the tenth plague that is the final plague and they're going to leave, they actually, they actually gathered up possessions and treasures. They, they got jewelry and other things from the Egyptians that they took with them. And, and I think that's kind of the context how this verse has gotten interpreted. And I'm not here to say that that doesn't apply and, 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 and that's not a context of it. But I, I'm going to tell you today that as I have studied this and tried to dig into it a little deeper, while that may be a context of it, it's not the only context. And to be honest, I may be missing it here. I don't even know if that's the primary context. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. The reason why I don't think that's necessarily the context or the primary context of the kingdom of darkness is because the, the, part of the idea here is, is that when you hide something, some of you uh, perhaps have a, a safe in your home. And you, you may have a variety of things in that safe. You, you may have just some important documents that you have locked up in that safe. But some of you, maybe you, maybe you own stocks and bonds and, and, and some other financial instruments like that. And so you've got, the, you, you've got the certificates of those things. And to make sure they're not lost or stolen, you, you've got them in a safe place. Or some of you, maybe you've got valuable jewelry. Maybe you've got a, a valuable... Uh, ring or, or, or something that, that's an heirloom in your family and it's been passed down. And so to keep it safe, uh, not only to know where it is, but also to keep it safe. And, and, and the idea is that if a burglar broke into your house, there are things he can take, but, but if he, unless he's uh, you know, really good, he can't crack the safe. And so those things remain safe. I have a question. How many of you have lights installed inside of your safe? Probably none of you. If you were to be inside of the safe when the door is closed, it is a dark place. But there are treasures in there. There are things that, are, that have been hidden. There are riches and there are secret in those secret places. And hidden riches of secret places. You, you see in here I guess is kind of some of the context, the, the application of this for you and I. God leads us into what appears to be dark places. And, and human nature is, our, most of us, most people don't like the darkness. Uh, and, and those that do, uh, some of them I don't believe them, but others of them, if they really are true and sincere in that, it's probably because there, there's some spiritual influences going on and not good spiritual influences. Because we weren't created to like the darkness. We weren't created to want to be in darkness. We want to be in light. We, we want to be where we can see. And so most of the time... We, we Again, as I said earlier, the, the, the uh, symbolically darkness uh, and depression go hand in hand. Uh, in fact, those that have experienced uh, se severe depression will, will lock themselves away in a very dark room. And so we have this perception of darkness that it is a, a negative thing. But I've come to tell you today, God has hidden some things. And to get them, to understand them, to experience them, you got to go in and through some darkness. The word darkness in this verse here, Isaiah 45 and 3, according to Strong's 
Figuratively, it means misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, or wickedness. So again, I, I'm not here <laughs> preaching today that darkness is appealing. I'm not saying it's exciting but I am saying from a scriptural perspective, there's another way of looking at it and understanding that when God leads us into the night season, when God brings about night in our lives, when God brings about, I, I think most of us would describe what we're in right now, if we were going to call it light or darkness, we'd call it darkness. But somehow we've got to understand that God brings us into darkness, the, the misery, the doom, the gloom, the destruction, the ignorance, the death. God brings us into those things because there are some hidden things that he's wanting to reveal. We, we've sung a song at times through the years that says, I've never seen a rainbow till after the rain. I've, I've never seen a sunrise until after the night. I've never known a victory till after a fight. I've never known his healing power until after the pain. Darkness, light, darkness, and then God reveals secret, hidden things. I, 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 I preached it the last couple of weeks. I've alluded to it at other times, but uh, I, several weeks ago, Job and Job's Job says, I, I heard of you with my ears, and now I, have ex now I have seen you with my own eyes. You want to talk about darkness, losing all of your possessions, losing all of your children, ten children, in one single day, one single accident. That is some serious darkness. But there were some secrets that God revealed to Job. There, there were some things that Job had heard about with regards to God. But as a result of the darkness that he went through, he now says, I, I have seen you with my own eyes. Right. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now watch this. Exodus 14. Verse number 19. Just to give you the context here. The children of Israel, this is the ending of their time in Egypt. They're coming out of Egypt. They're coming out of bondage. The last plague has taken place. All of the firstborn of the Egyptians have died. They are, they are now making their exit from Egypt. Pharaoh has told them. Pharaoh's told Moses, go. Enough's enough. You guys go. Get out of here. And yet he changes his mind. They're making their way. Three million plus people are making their way on foot out of Egypt. And Pharaoh and his armies change their mind and he decides he's not going to let them go. And so he goes after them. And so that's the context of, of the verses here. Exodus 14 and 19. And the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel. So the angel of God who is leading the way, he's leading the journey, watch this, he is removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So the Bible tells us that on their journey through through the wilderness, that there was a it was a, fi a, 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 a cloud by day and fire by night. That was representative of the Spirit of God that was leading them. And so here it says that that pillar of the cloud it was in front of them. It was leading them out, but now it goes behind them. And watch what happens in verse number twenty. And it, came to, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians. The Egyptians, this is the Egyptian army that is now chasing after the children of Israel. It came, this cloud came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. Who's them? The Egyptians. But it gave light by night to these these being the children of Israel, so that the one came near, not the other, all night. 
Oh, I've, I've wanted the last several weeks to be in church preaching with all of you, and this is this is probably the time at which the most. Uh, I, I wish I was not just in my living room. I wish I was with a preaching church this morning and had some had a little feedback today. Did you see this? There is now this cloud that was leading them is now between the Israelites and the Egyptians. But to the Egyptians, it was a cloud and darkness to them. But the same cloud, the same cloud that was darkness to the Egyptians gave light to the children of Israel. Adam Clark says this, How easily can God make the same thing an instrument of destruction or salvation? as seems best to his godly wisdom. He alone can work all by agents and, pro and produce any kind of effect, even by the same instrument, for all things serve the purpose of his will. One cloud. To one side, that cloud was darkness. To one side, that cloud was, was a negative thing. But on the other side, the other side of the same cloud, there was light. We, we enter, you and I enter from the dark side. You and I start from the Egyptian side. There, there's a cloud that we face. And, and again, whether it's a, 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 a uh, collective situation like we're in right now or our individual circumstances. There, there's some clouds that are in front of us that appear to be darkness. But on the other side of that cloud, there's some treasures. There's some secret things. There's some things that God has had hidden that He wants to reveal. There's some things that have been locked up in the darkness of God's safe where God wants to show them. I've used this analogy many times in a couple of different ways, but 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 I'll use it again today. It doesn't work today. I'm looking outside at beautiful blue skies. But on a cloudy day, on a rainy day, or maybe it's not even raining, but just a dark overcast day, we, we, we down on the earth look up at dark cloudy skies. And, and again, we, we consider those kind of days to be negative. We consider them to, to, uh, to be gloomy. And, and it may not be pitch black dark in the middle of the day, but we've all experienced what it's like in, in, in the middle of a day when we know it should be bright sunshine and very, very light out. And yet we look outside and because of the clouds that are blocking the sun, there is darkness, even if it's not full darkness, there's, there's a level of darkness. But if you were to get into an airplane on one of those days, you sit down and buckle in, and you look out of the window of the plane, and you still see the darkness of the clouds. You still see the gray skies. But as you get into that airplane, and it takes off down the runway, and it begins to climb... You start up into those clouds and those of you that have never perhaps had this experience as you are, especially when they're really big clouds and a really stormy day, one of the most turbulent times of that flight is going through the clouds. That plane may vibrate. It, it may bump up and down some as you're going into the darkness. But after just a few moments, mm -hmm. you break through on the other side or the top side, in this case, of the clouds. And all of that gray, all of that darkness is suddenly gone and you see the blue skies and the sunshine. And the other thing that's, that's always amazing to me is they're gray looking up. They're dark looking up. But when you break through on the other side and look down, they are, they are the purest, most beautiful white. Right. 
you have ever seen. Why? Because, because really two things, a change of perspective and a change of position. You see it different now. You're in a different place. And oh, I, I think even right now, again, in the, in the, biggest, uh, the, the, the biggest issue that we're facing right now, that we're all in this together, it, it applies. But as I've said numerous times in the last couple of weeks, when all of this is over with, we've still got, some of you still got financial challenges and health challenges and family situations and, and other things that you're dealing with that just because quarantine is lifted doesn't mean your life is, is wonderful and everything is lovely and in, and in order. And so I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to you today, I'm challenging you today that there's some dark Dark times that God leads us into, but there is there is a treasure. There's some secret things that God is is trying to reveal to us. I, by the help of the Lord tonight, I, I think I have a little bit of an explanation of why He does it that way. But again, here we are. Let's let's I. Uh, to be honest, I, hope, I don't know if you notice it or not, I, I really try not to talk about COVID-19 when I'm preaching or teaching the last couple of weeks because you get enough of that every single day. <laughs> so I try to stay away from it. I, I try my best, even though I probably have mentioned it at least once every single time. I'm still trying to stay away. I, I want to challenge you today. I believe the verses I just read to you in Exodus that verse number 20 applies to us today in these circumstances. To the world, it's, it's darkness. It's figurative darkness. It's misery. It's death. There's sorrow. There's despair. There's hopelessness that some people are feeling. That's one side of the cloud. But if you can get to the other side of the cloud, there's some things that God is revealing. There's some things that God is showing. I, 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 I've, I've heard, uh, I've had some, several shared with me directly, uh, either by, by uh, text or email or a phone conversation. In the last couple of weeks, in the midst of all of this darkness, there's people that have gotten new jobs. There's people that have gotten uh, new jobs that they're making more money now than they did in the previous job. There, there's people that are getting other uh, significant uh, uh, blessings and changes in their lives in the middle of this. But I believe there's even deeper things. There's even deeper secrets. There's deeper treasures in this darkness I will give you treasures of darkness I'm going to give you treasures out of your darkness I've got some hidden riches in secret places there's ships that have been sunk some by acts of war and violence, other by storms that they've encountered and didn't make it that they've sunk. And some of them have sunk with great treasure. There's a lot of movies that are based on finding treasure. You ever notice that usually treasure is found in a dark place? It's hidden. The riches the valuables are hidden in a dark place. Your dark place is not God's punishment. Your dark place is not God's disapproval of you. Your dark place is not God's punishment of you. But God's saying, I, I've got some things that I've hidden. And I'm not going to go about it the way you want to. I, I, I Hopefully we all can say, I know I can say, that in these last couple of weeks there's some things that I have... I have seen and experienced and, and have come to understand about God because of this darkness that I didn't understand before. I Again, I, I would much rather, if it was my choice, 
we'd all be together, or those of you that would be, we'd all be together on the hill today, having church together, and this is not my choice, but I've said it, I, I've said it many times as I greet people on a live stream during a service, that God is the same where you are as where we are, and in a whole new way, these last couple of weeks, we've experienced that. I, I've been able now, under these circumstances, to experience that from a different perspective. Is it easy? No. Is it what we want? No. Is it the path we would choose? No. But it is the pattern that God has established. Let me give you in the next few moments as I wind down let me give you just a couple of biblical examples of this. Of darkness and out of darkness treasures being revealed and Blessings being experienced. There's a story of a of a uh, a woman that was in. She was barren, had no children. In fact, it's the story of the woman and her husband. She says to her husband that the prophet, the man of God, is 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 comes by here often. He passes by, and so let's build a room for him, and and so that he can when he comes by here, he's got a place to rest a place to refresh, there's food to eat. There, and, and so they built him a house, or, or they built a room on their house. And so the, after, after they had done that, the prophet Elisha says to her, what is it that can be done for you? you? You bless me, you're taking care of me. What can I do for you? And his servant finds out she, was, she had had no children, and so he, he tells her she's going to bear a child, and she does. In fact, it's the King James doesn't say it quite this way, but it's the it's the story where she basically is saying, you know what? Don't don't mess with me, don't play around with me. I've already accepted that I'm I'm not going to have a child. I've passed that point, and 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 yet God does that, and and so it's this woman and that child who one day that child dies, and she gets. She she uh, she gets uh, I think the donkey if I'm not mistaken she gets the she gets on a donkey and she heads to Elisha the prophet and 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 something interesting about this story is as she is approaching the prophet he sees her coming and he sends his servant out to meet her and the servant comes out to her and and he says you know is everything okay. And, and now get this, her son is dead. He's just died. She's probably in a, in a, in a, in a, 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 a despair, turmoil over what's going on. And the, and the servant comes to her and says, is everything okay? And her response is, all is well. All, wait a minute, all is well. Your son is dead, and the reason you're where you are is because your son is dead, and you're probably despairing over your son being dead, and yet you're saying to the servant, all is well. I think there's a lesson that you and I ought to take from that. There's no point in belly aching and having a pity party with people that can't do anything about your circumstances and situations but give you sympathy. I think the reason she said to that man, all is well, is she knew, if I tell you what's going on, I may not get to the prophet who can do something about my need because you'll probably just overwhelm me with more darkness. So she tells him, all is well. In the middle of her darkness, all is well. But then she gets to the prophet she finds a hidden treasure that God can restore life because he goes to her house and stretches himself on this young man. God brings him back to life. How about, how about the darkness of, of the children of Israel in a standoff with the giant named Goliath? How about the darkness that was settling down over them that day? But out of that darkness we find the treasure, the hidden treasure of who's to be the next king. As David comes and it's in a dark situation where David begins to be publicly revealed. He, he was already anointed king by, by uh, Samuel but, but now he's beginning to be exposed to the rest of the world. 
How about this one? This one took place in some literal darkness. The decree goes forward by the king that the only person you can pray to is the king and, and Daniel goes and does what he always done, does and prays and he doesn't do it in secret. He's not hidden. He opens the windows of his house so those passing by can know and realizing somebody may hear and report him and sure enough that happens and so the king has to do what David or excuse me what what he said and throw Daniel into the lion's den and, and listen to this Daniel 6 and 19 then the king this is after he's he's thrown Daniel into the lion's den and so then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions and when he came to the den he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel and the king spake and said to Daniel O Daniel servant of the living God is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions he, he was hoping that that was the case that that was what he was wishing for then said Daniel unto the king O king live forever I've been in darkness all night I've been in the darkness of this lion's den I've been in the darkness of of these beasts that are surrounding me that have the ability to take my life. But I just want you to know this. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. The only reason we know of Daniel Surviving the lion's den is because he had to go into some darkness. But it was in the darkness of a night with the lions that Daniel found some hidden treasures. He found out the secret that God was the original lion tamer. He found out that beasts that had all of the ability to take his life could do nothing. But he had to go in the darkness first. Many other examples could be used here today. I'll give you one more. It's in the story of Esther. Esther is selected to be queen. As a Jew, she's now a Jewish queen in a, in a household, in a kingdom that's not the children of Israel. And Haman, out of his jealousy of Mordecai, Devises this, devises this plot to destroy the Jews. The decree goes out by the king that if you're a Jew, you're going to lose your life. And most of you know the story, but Mordecai appeals to Esther. And, and you, you've got to do, do you want to talk about darkness? I mean, an entire race of people in this living in this kingdom are, are have a have a a judgment pronounced upon them that they're all supposed to lose their lives that's that's some serious darkness but Esther responds finally to Mordecai's appeal she takes a stand for the children of Israel and you know the story God provides deliverance. What's amazing is this. We, we spend most of the time in the book of Esther focusing on Esther. Uh, I do think Mordecai gets a decent amount of, uh, of recognition, um, but, but really in a lot of ways, it's Mordecai is kind of the, uh, the unsung hero of the book of Esther. Because he was the one that makes the appeal, but not only that, he was, he was the cause. <laughs> he, was, he was the source of, of, of why Haman was so upset and wanted something to be done. Watch this, watch this. The day, if I, if I remember the story correctly, the day that the children of Israel were supposed to die, the day that the Jews 
were supposed to lose their life, ultimately just so that Mordecai could be gotten rid of. The very day that was supposed to be their demise turned out to be the very day that Haman lost his life. The very gallows that Haman had constructed to be the thing that was going to cause Mordecai's life to be taken turned out to be the very thing that took Haman's life. Oh, I, 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 we're still in this. I don't know how much longer we have. Based on what I overheard last night, the governor saying we, we've got at least two more weeks at this point under the current circumstances that we are in. That, that, that's, that's darkness to me. That, that's darkness in a lot of different ways for a lot of different reasons. But I'm telling you today, we did not come into this darkness collectively nor individually because God was destroying us or because God is trying to get rid of us. But we have come into some darkness. And I've come to tell somebody today, a bunch of somebodies today, that in the midst of this darkness, but not not just this darkness, the other darkness that you may be facing or that you may face in the future. It may be darkness on one side, but darkness on one side is going to turn into some new light of revelation and understanding on the other side. So, you got to go into the darkness. But in the darkness, there are some deep, and secret things. In the darkness there's some mysteries. That God has hidden. And he wants to reveal. In the darkness there's some treasures. That he's going to give. You and I. Again. There is a negative. Component of spiritual darkness. Darkness spiritual blindness. I'm not in any way today implying that that's not the case. But I believe based on the verses I've read to you there is, there is a principle that there's another part of darkness that God brings in our lives. That God allows in our it's not the enemy. We, we, we typically associate darkness with the devil. We associate light with God. And, and I get that. I understand that. But I've read to you several places. I've, I've given you, I believe, several valid examples that demonstrate situations and circumstances that were darkness. But there was some amazing things hidden in that darkness. I'd like to challenge some of you right now. Maybe you've already done this. In fact, I'm sure some of you already have. Or maybe you've done it a while ago and it's been a while since you've done it. I want you to think back for a moment of some of the dark times you've been through. Some of the dark times you've been through as an individual. But how about some of the dark times maybe your family has been through? This isn't the first time that we've been in some kind of situation that as, a, as an entire church we've been affected by something that would be a, a dark time. There, there's, a, there's a lot of, probably a lot of things that could be Reference one of the things that's the first to come to mind would be 2003, the day that the building collapsed. Maybe, maybe you never have, or again, maybe it's been a while. Would, would you just take a moment and whatever comes to mind, and I believe whatever comes to mind is not just a natural coincidence. I, I think some of you, the Lord has already, and maybe in the next few moments, the Lord will quicken some things to your mind things you've been through dark times that you've been through but, but would you take a moment now and rather than focusing on the dark time would you think for a moment about some of the things that were revealed to you would you think about some of the hidden treasures 
Oh, I know that there, there's no condoning of sin. There's no justification of sin. But how many of us, not just our initial experience of God saving us, but after we got baptized and got the Holy Ghost and, and, and we're, we're living for God as disciples and saints, how many of us have had some major mistakes and, and we've had some serious falls that as we went through those, those were some dark times. We, we did some things that were deeply disappointing to ourselves. Forget everybody else. They were, they were disappointing to ourselves. And while we're not justifying or condoning sin, I think some of you can look back and, and there is a treasure you're now possessing a treasure of another revelation, a, another level of revelation of God as a merciful God, a forgiving God. Several of you that I'm pretty sure are probably watching right now, and you've gone through the darkness of the death of a loved one, a, a spouse or a child or a parent. You've gone through those times, and, and perhaps while many times you can still even now think of the darkness of those times, would you pause for a moment right now and, and just think about some of the treasures that God revealed to you from and through? That actually in the darkness there was some hidden treasures. In the darkness there was some there was some things that God was revealing to you that had you not been in and gone through the darkness, the level of revelation and understanding you now have, you would not have had. I know some of you can think, I believe, of past, but I'm not here today just to preach to you about the past. I've come to tell somebody today, whether it's things you're in right now, or things you will go through in the future. There is treasure in the darkness. There is a revelation. Another level of revelation. There's another level of understanding. That God is only going to bring about. In the darkness. Father help us. Help us today. Again, God, we're in, we're in an unusual time in which it's not always the case where there is something that is impacting every one of us simultaneously. We're, we're, we're more used to being in times where there are individuals that are going through some things. There's individuals that are in darkness, but we, we're feeling right now what is to a degree a darkness. God, I believe, not only right now, but I believe that in our futures, there are some treasures. There are some secrets that you have to be revealed. They're going to come in the darkness. Lord, our nature, our humanity, as we avoid the darkness, we, we do everything we can to get away from the darkness but God according to your word according not only to some things that I've read today but principles that I see you have chosen that in some darkness is where you've got things hidden and that's where you're going to reveal things to us help us today help us today God help us today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, I pray not just for today, not just for this situation, not just this season we are in right now, but help us as we move forward, God. I pray for someone that may be watching today, God, that is yet to have the experience of knowing what it is to come through the darkness and to be able to look back and see the ways in which you revealed yourself. I pray today that you would give them the grace as they are in and walk through their darkness 
they would find those hidden treasures. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty much done, but I just, I don't feel that releasing you per se, right? Yet is I, I believe it. I can't see you. I can't. I can't go based on what I see right now. But I will go based on what I feel right now. And I believe the Holy Ghost is, is still touching and ministering to some of you. Maybe even right now. Maybe even right now, some of you that you've been in the darkness that God, in this moment, is beginning to turn on some light in darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go turn your eyes on Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim.
thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I think in the context of what John says, that the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it, or again, the darkness cannot overpower it. That the assurance we have, because He said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. When we enter into that darkness that God may allow in our lives, we can go into it with one thing at least that we stand upon and hold to. At some point, the light is going to overpower the darkness. Darkness never defeats light. There are, there are battles, if you will, that, that the victor is not always guaranteed. Water is typically used to put out fire, but you get a big enough blaze going on, hot enough, you can throw a couple of buckets of water on that fire, and the water is not going to win. But there is one fight that I don't know of any situation where the victor is not always the same. And that is when light and darkness face off. You ever walked into your bedroom at night when it was dark, reaching for the light switch, hoping, oh, I hope somehow darkness, or I hope somehow light wins. I hope somehow light wins. No, because you know, all you got to do is turn on the light and the darkness is going to go. So the guarantee is no matter how dark the darkness is, and it may go on for a little while, at some point the light is coming on. And when the light comes on, you're all of a sudden going to look around and start to see the things that God had hidden in the darkness that He was waiting to reveal. In Jesus' name, thank you for joining with us today being a part, even though we can't see you, we know you're there. Thank you for taking the time. Look forward to sharing with you again this evening. God bless you in Jesus' name.